So good afternoon to all of you who are connected to this session. And before anything else, thank you very much for your interest in this session and on what is the role of the immunology in pregnancy. Basically, we will start with an overview of the immunology response and then go a little deeper into some points or more relevant points of the immunology of pregnancy. So without any further delay, we are going to start the session now. And let's go. Okay. We live surrounded. Oh, sorry. Uh, now, we live surrounded by potential environmental threats from different origins. But fortunately, human biology has developed the mechanisms to face them. The science that study these mechanisms is immunology. The immune system is comprised of organs, cells, and molecules that cooperate to protect us against external and internal aggressions, and also provides constant surveillance to ensure the integrity of the organisms. These functions can be performed thanks to the immune system's ability to differentiate what is self and what is not. To defend us against, against foreign antigens, the human body has a series of physical barriers such as skin or temperature. If these barriers are overcome, the immune system itself comes to, into play, initially through the innate immune system, which with its mechanisms, such as the inflammatory response, constitutes the first line of defense. If these mechanisms are also overcome, the adaptive response is ultimate responsible for eliminating the assault. In this box, we can see the most important characteristics of the innate and adaptive immunity. In innate immunity, the components are already present at birth and are activated by a wide variety of pathogens. Each cell of the innate system can act on a multitude of target cells, so it is on a specific response. As the components are already present and ready for the response, is wanted is very early in order of hours, and also as the the components are already performed, the response will always be identical. On the contrary, for the components of the adaptive immunity, as in naming case, they are generated through the life and will only be activated against specific components of the pathogens. In this way, a single cell of the adaptive in immunity will only respond against a single target cell. As the components must be created in response to the aggression, it will take longer to activate, but in the same way, later responses will be amplified. At the level of cellular components, we also observe differences. When there are more cells in the innate responses for the adaptive immunity, as we can see in, the, in this picture, the repertory is much smaller. Innate immunity can be activated by two strategies. Firstly, to the recognition of structures always present in pathogens, like this. Or through the recognition of compounds that are released when tissues are damaged. In both cases, an inflammatory response is stimulated, leading to the elimination of the damage. Secondly, thanks to the ability to discriminate one sound, the so-called HLA molecules present in the surfaces, all the cells of the organism are specific for its human being and therefore represent each individual identity. A particular type of cell called the NK cells is capable of identifying whether a cell has those molecules of its own, in which case it catalogues as healthy cell. But if these HLA molecules are absent or are different from those of healthy cells, the NK cells will be activated and destroy these abnormal cells. On the contrary, the activation of the adaptive response is much more complex and requires the intervention of the initial innate response. Its several components that are T and B lymphocytes are resting and awaiting activation. The signal is provided by accessory cells of the innate immunity showing the fragment of the invading agent to which they have to respond. In this way, the adaptive response is educated to be specific only against the fragment of injury. We can find 
two types of T lymphocytes, the Th1 or helper cells, which are responsible for coordinating the subsequent adaptive response through the uh, release of soluble mediators. In turn, these can, these TH cells can be of four types, depending on the environment that exists in the organism, the TH1, TH2, TH17, or T-Rex. These cells will release another series of mediators that will exercise different functions. For example, the TH1 are responsible for mounting inflammatory response to pathogens that attack cells, such as viruses or the T-Rex cells are responsible for blocking the immune response. The second type of T lymphocyte are the so-called cytotoxic cells or TCs. These cells are involved in the direct destroy of the cell that carries the fragment that initially activated them. And finally, the B lymphocytes that produce the protein so-called antibodies that recognize and bind the fragment that initially activating them to physically neutralize the damage. Now that this overview is over, we will learn how the immune response works in pregnancy. Infertility described as the failure to achieve pregnancy after a year of frequent and unprotected sexual intercourse on fraternity appears in approximately 10 to 15 percent of couples in reproductive age. Over this, in the vast majority of cases, the cause is known but there is a 30% of cases in which the case, the cause remains unknown. Recent research has determined that in conditions associated with fertility problems, such as preeclampsia, recurrent implantation failure, among others, there is an origin related to alteration of the maternal immune system function. It's important for us to be aware that both the embryo and the tissues that are created during pregnancy have a paternal and a maternal origin. So the new organism that is being developed will be semi-foreign for the maternal immune system due, due to the paternal contribution. And it's possible to become completely strange in cases of egg donation. Under these circumstances, pregnancy is a biological unique process in which the development of foreign tissue is accepted and the immune system is capable of maintaining its maternal defense function, but also allows and supports embryonic development and actively participates in implantation, development, and delivery. The adaptation of the immune system to allow pregnancy before itself after conception, well, before conception, sorry at certain points in the uterine cycle so that each month will be prepared for a potential pregnancy. Due, the, due to the effect of sex hormones at different points of the menstrual cycle, the cells that make up the tissue where the implantation will take place, known as the endometrium, start to specialize. They acquire the ability to release soluble mediators responsible for attracting certain types of immune system cells to the implantation site. Furthermore, these hormones and the release in mediators will work in other levels, such as the contribution to the maturation of the female reproductive cells, repairing the changes in the tissue that occur during the cycle, or eliminating the cellular remains generated in these changes. Also, after conception, they will present relevant functions for the proper development of the placenta and to ensure the postnatal health status of the offspring. Additionally, this immune adaptation will be influenced by external contribution of the seminal fluid, which upon contact with the female reproductive tract cells activates an inflammatory response. This response, ultimately, due to the environment generated and due to the contribution of non-cellular uh, components of the semen, begin to establish an environment that inhibits the maternal immune response. Also, this inflammatory response will also help preparing the female tract for pregnancy. However, if there is a key point that it is under the influence of the immune system during pregnancy, that is implantation. The immune system is critical for the development of the decibel, a tissue that is generated 
as a result of embryonic implantation from the endometrium, which is the tissue where the implantation occurs and which will later originate the placenta. The adaptation of the decidua supposes, first, the creation of an immunologically inactive or privileged environment, the restructuring to continue comforting the implantation, and in addition, a series of changes that allow the access of other cells of the immune system there. Overall, the deciduous leukocytes are pre-programmed to support the deciduous development and to cope with the embryonic attachment. All this reprogramming will always lead to the inhibition of the immune response. As we see in this graph, initial activation of the immune system is necessary after conception and is quickly necessary to block the response and to keep it inactive for the virtually entire pregnancy until delivery. In this balance, we can see here, is represented the change of the initial inflammatory response mediated by Th1, T17, and B lymphocytes that are responsible for the defense of the mother towards that environment of tolerance that protects and supports the development of the placenta and embryo mediated mostly by T-Rex, TH2, and AK cells. These latter cells, the natural killer cells or NK cells, are the most abundant in the decibel and are completely different from their broad counterparts in relation to the physical appearance, as we can see in this picture, but most importantly, in their function. While in blood, they live up to their name and are responsible for the destruction of damaged cells in the decibel, they are responsible for the release of mediators. In addition, they are the population that most dramatically changes throughout the uterine cycle, reaching its maximum value in the cycle at the time of implantation, at this point of the cycle. These NK cells are waiting in the rest mode and their activation will depend, finally, on env environmental signals. This means that if the immune adaptation toward tolerance has not been initiated in the previous phases, they could acquire an inflammatory function with harmful effects for the pregnancy. The basic functions of these uterine NK cells are, first of all, to contribute to the generation of blood vessels that nourish the placenta. This function is crucial for the formation of the placenta and the consolidation of the early pregnancy. In fact, the altered production of mediators that activate these cells has been associated with unexplained infertility. Second, uterine NK cells participate in the regulation of implantation through the curatelian interactions, as we will see below, and finally, interact with other cells to ensure that the tolerant environment is maintained. As we commented, NK cells will mediate embryonic cell attachment through curatelian interaction. Q receptors are found on the surface of the NK cells and are able to identify for itself through HLA molecules, which represent its individual cell identity. So there are two kinds of Q receptors, ones that activate and others that block the NK cells function. Moreover, the present and number and function can be variable, but eventually, what really matters to us is the final combination of these receptors in the cell that allow us to group them into two types. KIR-AA, which blocks their response, and kir bx which mediate their activation. In the embryo, NK cells interact with a particular type of HLA molecule, which is the HLA-C, inherited in 50% from each biological progenitor. These HLA-C molecules are also divided into two types, C1 and C2, for structural reasons. In these circumstances, the HLA-C molecules carried by the pregnant woman, like this one, will be considered as self, and any difference from these molecules will be identified as foreign and will lead to the engagement of the NK cells. Thus, when discrepancies in the HLA-C molecules exist between mother and the embryo, 
and the pregnant woman carries the BX profile of NK cells, in other words, activating cures, the development of the placental blood vessels is complete. Whereas when the pregnant woman has an inhibitory profile of NK cells, in other words, blocking cures, the NK cells do not release the adequate amount of mediators. The creation of these vessels is not complete, and therefore the contribution of maternal flow to the placenta will be lower. For the reason, it is associated with conditions such as preeclampsia, recurrent discontinuous abortion, or intrauterine growth retardation. Other cells that also are relevant for the pregnancy are some different of uh, subtypes of T lymphocytes. As a whole, T lymphocytes account for the 10% of the residual cells, most of which are the, those that are responsible for cell destruction or the so called cytotoxic cells. However, the most important aspect of the T cells is the existence of a delicate balance within the difference of populations that would allow a successful pregnancy. The Th1 and T70 cells involved in the inflammatory response must be inhibited, as its increase would trigger a maternal immune system attack against the embryo. This situation has been described in cases, for example, of preterm birth or preeclampsia. The TH2, responsible for organizing uh, antibody-based responses, should be maintained. The increase of these cells leads in the long term to states of inflammation, and these circumstances have been associated with the current pregnancy loss. Finally, the T-Rex that are key to the generation of a tolerant environment should be promoted. The decline of these cells skills the balance toward inflammatory responses, which has been associated with recurrent implantation failure or, mis or miscarriage, among other conditions. In fact, the semi-strange pregnancy will not be able to begin if there is not an adequate number of T-Rex cells in the uterus. Finally, the last uh, cell type involved, although indirectly, are the B lymphocytes, which, as we have already mentioned, are the producers of specific antibodies. There are two types of antibodies. Firstly, the named protectors, which are able to bind tightly to their target, but do not trigger any response. These antibodies are responsible for neutralizing the proteins of paternal origin in the maternal fetal interface, which prevents uh, the maternal immune attack. They will also modulate the expression of the HLA molecules and therefore the ability of the NK cells to discriminate what is foreign. These types of antibodies have been found decreased in women with recurrent spontaneous abortion. The second type of antibodies are the autoantibodies that are generated by anomalies in the discrimination mechanisms of what is self and are directed against normal structures of the organism. This pathological response will ultimately generate an inflammatory response and the indiscriminate production of autoreactive antibodies. As we can see in this table, we can see some examples of how the presence of uh, some of antibodies, such as those recognized, those that recognize thyroid or ovarian structures, occur more frequently in women with problems of infertility. Immunological disorders are included within the causes of unknown origin and therefore should be considered when other more frequent causes have been excluded. Generally, an immunological origin is associated with an unsuccessful attempt of assisted reproduction techniques, recurrent implantation failure, or spontaneous abortion. When we finally consider the possibility of an immunological origin as possible, in order to begin the studies, we gather information related to the personal and familiar history, <coughs> sorry, uh, risk factors and lifestyle, and illnesses and treatments recently received. Within this information, we will perform a global immunological assessment by analyzing the number of local immunological cells in the compartment of the organism where the implantation takes place, which is the endometrium, 
also we study the level of thyroid, thyroid hormones, the blood coalition activity, the QRTLE compatibility, and also we quantificate other series of immune components that help us to detect the presence of autoimmune disease that could be present without symptoms. For sure, if the available information made us suspect of a specific autoimmune disease, we would proceed to the specific study of them. Because of their importance, we are going to spend some time on certain tests. The first of them consists of the evaluation of the lymphocytes populations named IMAP. Through this test, we will analyze locally in the tissue where the implantation is going to take place, both the levels and the activity of those populations that present important function for the success of, preg of pregnancy, the NK cells, the different subsets of TH cells and T cells, and the B lymphocytes. To this end, this test will be performed taking a small piece of the tissue that we want to analyze through a process that turns out to be the most minimal invasive and harmful to women. This analysis will be useful for the identification of quantitative alterations with respect to expected reference values, which have been associated with some pathological conditions in several investigations. Thanks to this test, we will be able to select the most appropriate immunomodulatory therapy to control these possible complications. For this reason, this test is especially indicated for couples who have suffered from a recurrent implantation failure and miscarriage as long as embryonic or endometrial factors have been rolled out first. The second of these tests that are worth taking a look at is QRTLA compatibility study. In this test, we are going to analyze the profile of the Q molecules that are present in the NAK cells of the future pregnant woman and the HLAC molecules of the future embryo that are going to be the result of those inherited by the mother and the father. Certain curative combinations have been associated with pregnancy complications. Since the HLAC molecules expressed by the embryo will depend on those present by the biological progenitors, this study will allow us to estimate the risk that the combination between the UNKs and the HLS molecules expected in the embryo implies a complication, and thus apply the corresponding measures to control or at least avoid these complications. To this end, this test will be aimed for those couples who have suffered recurrent implantation failure or miscarriage, as well as for optimist, optimizing the compatibility in cases of gamete uh, donation. <clears throat> For this analysis, we will only need peripheral blood, and to properly establish compatibility, we must perform QNHLA typing in couples using their own gametes in the pregnant woman and only HLAC in the male, while in cases of the nation, we will always analyze Q and HLAC in the pregnant woman and the HLAC of the biological progenitors. That could be the X, or the sperm. Depending on the circumstance, the recommended intervention may be immunomodulatory therapy or selection of the most compatible gametes. Once we have identified the immunological disorder, then we can choose the best clinical procedure. On the one hand, we have non-pharmacological strategies such as improving lifestyle with a healthy diet, getting up asleep, avoiding toxic habits, or dealing with the stress, or if required, taking, uh, taking supplements. <clears throat> On the other hand, the other group of strategies refer to the pharmacological ones, in which we will have the option of administering immunomodulators, aimed at correcting the alteration of the NK cells, in both cases, or by excess with corticals, for example, or by default with HCG, hormone. Other therapies are oriented to control the alterations in the balance of the different TH uh, cells, which normally are directed towards a predominant inflammatory response, for example, with the use of uh, intralipid. Or finally, the administration of IVIG 
should be useful for all immune disorders or GMCCF for suboptimal kid HLA compatibility. In addition, in some cases, it may be necessary to use additional drugs such as low dose uh, acetyl salicylic acid or heparin, among others. To conclude with this session, let's summarize the most relevant key points to remember. The immune system, besides being involved in the defense of the pregnant woman, also participates actively in the whole process of pregnancy. The maternal immune response and recognition of the embryo as a foreign tissue but without triggering responses necessary for the subsequent development of a tolerant environment. NK cells plays an essential role in the development of the blood vessels that provide maternal blood flow to the placenta. The state of tolerance requires the presence of the T-Rex and the TH2 cells, which have a tolerance-oriented function, and the absence of uh, TH1 and TH17, which are associated with the activation of uh, inflammatory responses. The inadequate supply of proteins and the appearance of an inflammatory or autoimmune disorders can alter the immune balance and this could favor the appearance of complications. And finally, laboratory diagnostic tests and therapies must be strictly directed towards the cause of the immune alteration. And well, with this slide, we have finished this talk and we hope that it was useful, useful for you and live up to your expectations. And thank you very much for your attention.